<laughs> She's a, a PhD candidate within the School of Nursing at Curtin University in Western Australia. And she's supported by an Australian Commonwealth RTP scholarship. Her interest in mental health promotion started over 20 years ago, working as an applied psychologist in Scotland. After migrating with to Australia to live with her husband and raise their three children, Leslie commenced further study in perinatal mental health at the University of South Australia, following a six-year voluntary role as a maternity consumer advocate with both Lamaze Australia and Lamaze International, where she contributed to the advocacy for equity of access to evidence-based childbirth education to better prepare parents for pregnancy, labor, birth, and early parenting. Leslie's PhD research focuses on optimizing mental health and emotional well-being of women in Australia on their journey to parenthood. And um, take it away, Leslie, and just let me know when you want me to move the, to the next slide for you. Thanks. Thank you, Catherine, for your kind introduction. As Catherine mentioned, I'm not a midwife, but through my own journey to parenthood, birthing on both sides of the world, I've gathered great admiration and respect for the profession of midwifery. So I'd like to thank the conference committee for the opportunity today to join your international celebration of midwives. In Australia, where I'm joining you from today, it's our custom to recognise the traditional custodians of the lands we are on and their continuing connection to country. Therefore, I would like to begin by acknowledging the Wajak Noongar people as traditional owners and custodians of the lands where I live, work and study at Curtin University on the Perth campus. I give my respects to their ancestors and elders and senior knowledge holders past, present and those following in their footsteps. So not just as midwives, but as human beings, how are you must be one of the most frequently asked questions we ask of other people. As midwives, I'm sure these are words you say many, many times a day as you interact with pregnant women and mothers in your care. What I hope to share with you in this session is a chance to look through a lens of sustainable midwifery to consider the mental health promotion scope of midwifery practice. And we can have the next slide, Catherine, thank you. Oops, there we go. <laughs> to do this, my presentation will begin with a brief look at what is standard practice within Australia. Using an analogy of the labyrinth throughout the presentation, I hope will allow you to translate what I see as the landscape facing midwives here in Australia to the countries where you are practicing, researching and studying midwifery. Considering why it is time for a change in line with the conference theme is like the identification of any problem. Great in theory, but how do we achieve that in practice? The gap between the knowledge of the World Health Organization and the sustainable development goal of 2030 that the promotion of mental health and emotional well-being of women and girls is to be achieved and the doing of exactly that, the creation of change for tomorrow, all of that for me is the labyrinth and more of that to come. As part of my PhD, a scoping review of international literature is underway and during this process I was able to uncover empirical evidence highlighting some of the experiences within the labyrinth the barriers facing the profession of midwifery internationally. So I'm keen to share these with you today to begin to shine a light on where we can begin to illuminate a path forward. Finally, in Australia, we have commenced our engagement of the midwifery profession as key stakeholders working with women from pregnancy to parenthood. So I'll leave you today at the end of the presentation with some insight into the research I am leading at Curtin University that I hope will give you some inspiration of the midwifery lights that we are shining inside our labyrinth down in this part of the world. And we can have the next slide, thank you. 
So the labyrinth, I've used this word a couple of times already, and for me, this image is quite powerful. You can read here the intricate pathways, ups and downs, the twists and turns are described with quite negative language, irregular, complicated, and difficult to find one's way. As an applied psychologist working with women in Scotland 20 years ago, the labyrinth described their stories I would hear when meeting them in mental health services to assess and treat postnatal depression, anxiety, self-esteem or grief following the loss of their child. As a mother myself, the labyrinth is what I see in the mothering communities I have been immersed in over the last 12 years. The transition to motherhood is like nothing else. There are unexpected challenges. There are pleasant surprises. Against our own standards, we cope one day. We may believe we don't cope the next day, but for most of us, we find a way. Now, as an aspiring researcher, what I'm learning is that the research community is filled with the thinkers, those people looking for the pockets of light to uncover the critical new knowledge we need to address current health problems. Despite the majority of women in Australia receiving maternity care within a hospital setting where the medical model prevails and caregivers are influenced by the detect disease and risk framework, our mental health statistics estimate four in five of these women walk the pathways with a better state of mental health than the one in five women that are reported to experience mental illness. In Australia, the four in five translates approximately to 250,000 women annually. So who are they and what is their story through the labyrinth? By understanding their journey, could that be the knowledge we need to shape what we know about mental health during the perinatal period and then support research to reclaim mental health for what it is, health and not illness. Because after all, the rules of the labyrinth are based on psychological theories and perspectives that tell us mental health is not a fixed experience and one we continually move between mental illness and mental health on a continuum. Thank you, Catherine, for the next slide. The placenta, one of the most vital organs in pregnancy. Once again, intricate pathways are involved and you don't need me to tell you that these pathways are very different. Complex, yes. Irregular, yes. But this time life giving and nourishing. Throughout the pregnancy, the baby is nourished with oxygen and vital nutrients during pregnancy. So I'm not sure about you, but when I look at these images together, we see lots and lots of intricate pathways. Some not associated with complexity, difficulty or irregularity. Two very different outcomes. So something to think about. When we think about the pathway forward for change to move towards a sustainable and different future, do we see the pathways as complex, obstructive and challenging, or nourishing, hopeful, and life enhancing. My perspective at the start of the PhD journey is let's be grateful these pathways exist first and foremost. We'll take the next slide, thank you. So back to how are you? The question that starts your inquiry with women, whether that is in pregnancy, labor, birth, or the postnatal period. Like many countries around the world, a screening for mental illness is offered using the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale. In Australia, pregnant women will complete at least one questionnaire and a subjective decision be made by the consulting midwife about whether this woman, sorry, this woman is in fact okay. The EPDS is not a diagnostic tool, so any score a woman generates is indicative of the presence of mental illness, but not a diagnosis. In Australia, like many other countries around the world, the midwife will make a clinical judgment based on this score and decide whether the woman requires ongoing referral to clinical pathways or not. 
So you are okay. Your indicative total score is not high enough. So yes, you are okay. But how okay are you? And could you be more okay? Or we have the women in Australia where the EPDS score indicates you're not okay. Therefore, there is an indication that you may be experiencing mental illness. So you are referred on to specialist perinatal healthcare professionals who will work within their model of care to diagnose the presence of any mental health difficulties. This may be a similar model of care in your country, or it may be the role of the midwife to provide ongoing care for mental illness in resource constrained countries. But you are pregnant, so you return to the midwife to continue to receive midwifery care, perhaps two or four weeks later, and the question is posed once more. How are you? The midwife may or may not re-administer the EPDS depending on individual healthcare guidelines of best practice. But for this woman, she continues to have a degree of mental health within her experience of any mental illness. So how does she answer that question, how are you? She may answer, I am fine, I'm okay, but how fine or okay could she be? This for me is the entry to the mental health promotion labyrinth facing the midwifery profession. In the absence of any standardized screening for mental health and emotional well-being within routine maternity care, these conversations are bound in subjective decisions the midwife will make. The decision that's made in the absence of any working definition within empirical evidence of what it actually means to be emotionally well during the perinatal period. A lot of commentary exists around how multidimensional a framework of emotional being, sorry, well-being includes. However, recommendations um, encourage definitions to be specific to cohorts of the population and also specific to discrete transitions like parenthood, pregnancy, across the entire lifespan. So as pregnant women, and the midwives, they enter the labyrinth together, regardless of whether an EPDS score indicates a level of mental illness. Whilst they do that, there is no standardized screening or opportunity for midwives to optimize the level of mental health of that woman in her care. We'll take the next slide, thank you. Despite what we know about midwifery philosophy, and its foundations in the collaboration of working with women at a time in her life where she is generally well, there exists an inequity between physical health promotion and mental health promotion within standard care. Standard maternity care demonstrates midwives pride, sorry, provide high quality health promotion throughout their relational care with women, offering education, support and guidance towards healthy weight gain physical activity, good sleep hygiene, and abstinence from drug and alcohol use. The World Health Organization defined complete health as physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So if we are guided by this definition, within everyday maternity care, this presents an opportunity lost for midwives to have meaningful conversations with women to align with the sustainable midwifery practice of prioritizing the holistic well-being of the mother first and foremost. So the question I pose to you as midwives, and Jane's gonna pop a link into the chat for me, is do you think the promotion of mental health and emotional well-being has become lost along the intricate pathways of the labyrinth or has it ever been invited to enter the arena? So to do this in the chat, there's gonna be a link for you to register your answer. Uh, when you register your answer, you should be able to see everyone's answers. Uh, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to have uh, a chance to think, make your answer, and then um, have a look at the results. I can see a couple of answers coming through, which is great.
Okay. Okay, so hopefully everyone is able to see uh, the results on their screen, but we have 86% uh, to um, the fact that promotion of mental health and emotional well-being has been lost within the labyrinth. And we have 14% of our answers are unsure about whether um, it has been lost or was it ever invited. So that will stay live. If anyone um, hasn't voted yet, you can still do that. But if anyone has any comments or, or discussion points about that, we will um, take those at the end of the presentation. But thank you for um, having a, an answer there. It's really um, helps me just to um, understand how everyone else is viewing this topic. So I'll continue with the theme of the day is midwives a vital climate solution. I understand this to be midwives internationally working in as experts, sorry, in primary maternity care work into their fullest scope of practice, supporting the trajectory of women around the world in preconception pregnancy planning through pregnancy and the first 2000 days of motherhood to positively impact first and foremost, the mental health of the woman. Her self-efficacy, her self-image, her confidence within relationships, within her home, her community, and within society. All in all, a more sustainable world is a generation of children, starting with mothers who have optimal mental health and emotional well-being. I will take the next slide. Sorry, Leslie, I don't think I came back from your mentee screen, so I'm going to have to reshare the presentation. Oh, sorry. And hopefully it will be from the slide, not mm. from the beginning. Sorry. We can take the next one when uh, you're ready. Thank you. Whoops. Oh, is this where you want to be? This is where I want to be. Thank you. OK, <laughs> let me mute myself again. <laughs> So a more sustainable world, a generation of children starting whoops, with mothers who have optimal mental health and emotional well-being. If only it was that simple, however, in reviewing international literature from 2019 through to 2024, an insight into the blocked pathways emerged, the intricate pathways that lead to nowhere, within the labyrinth are described through research published in Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Pakistan, and the Republic of Ireland. What I'll try to offer you within this part of the presentation is a concise summary of the themes, because as you can imagine, there are a few. In reviewing the literature, what emerges very quickly is the interchangeable use of the words mental health. When research articles start with a title to explore, for example, the experience of supporting mental health, what is then described within the full text is frequently the experience of supporting mental health problems, disease, pathology, and illness. Whilst this confusion exists in the literature that I've read, it seems reasonable to hypothesize that despite ongoing efforts to challenge the stigma, around mental illness through public health campaigns like Are You OK Day in Australia, a generalised view may continue in societies where you live and work, continuing to use the term mental health when actually we are referring to mental illness. Whether those young women <clears throat> approaching reproductive maturity and women planning pregnancy consider preparations for optimising their own mental health and emotional well-being before entering this life-changing transition to motherhood. I suspect is superseded by the focus towards your physical health preparation, including following advice on vitamin intake, reducing alcohol consumption, diet and exercise, and optimizing BMI. If I'm an adolescent girl, a young woman, or an adult preparing for pregnancy, or I am pregnant and preparing for motherhood, do I have a good understanding of what my individual perinatal mental health even is, first and foremost? I've probably heard of depression, anxiety and stress whilst engaging in the digital world of social media and engaging with pregnancy influencers on the apps. 
but are my expectations accurate of what I can expect from my journey to parenthood and the midwifery care that I'll receive? Do I expect the midwife will want to know about my mental health as well as any mental illness? Do I even know the difference between the two? If I don't, and I hold a view that when I'm asked, how are you, or given a screening questionnaire that focuses directly on mental illness, am I then feeling judged? <clears throat> Do I feel safe to share my honest thoughts on how I am? It all sounds complex, intricate and challenging, doesn't it? Even if I am experiencing some appropriate apprehension and challenges in understanding and adjusting to my new normal of pregnancy, do I know that this is not automatically a sign of mental illness that is perhaps left unspoken? Some of the literature reports on the systemic barriers facing the profession of midwifery. First and foremost, continuity of midwifery care. In Australia, figures between 8 and 10% represent the number of birthing women in our country receiving continuity of midwifery care during the entirety of pregnancy. There are 146 models of care in the public system offering care from antenatal to postpartum, whilst women can also access 20 of the privately practicing midwifery models offered by endorsed midwives for the duration of her maternity care. For everyone else, standard care will be provided by an unknown midwife in a public hospital or by a known obstetrician in a private hospital. The implication of this as a barrier to the promotion of mental health and emotional well-being is firstly the midwife having an opportunity to get to know the woman and similarly the woman having an opportunity to develop a sense of trust as she gets to know her midwife. Commentary around the lack of trust and apprehension around what it means to have a mental health difficulty during pregnancy is reported as a barrier to having meaningful conversations during routine care. One study reports midwives difficulties in gaining certainty over whether or not it is within the scope of practice. And if it is, there's a description offered that when it comes to perinatal mental health, midwives are then asked to be experts, but with no training. 31% of midwives participating in the study from the Republic of Ireland stated that they had had generic training in perinatal mental health in the last two years, with only 21% suggesting a sense that it actually helped them do their job. The authors don't allude to if this training was to support mental health or to support mental health difficulties and illness. A suggestion is offered that for change in the future, the focus be towards the undergraduate and postgraduate education programmes. A newly qualified midwife in the UK study reported, as a new midwife, I'm so focused on keeping the mum and the baby alive, I have no idea of the benefits of perinatal mental health. There is an acknowledgement that in order to achieve greater systemic change, this change may need to start with the academic preparation of our future midwives, as well as continuing ongoing development opportunities and the maintenance of competencies within midwives already working across the profession. From my experience working with women myself during the perinatal period, this would make sense as the needs of our consumers, I think, is always evolving. Finally, mentioned in the literature is the elusive factor of time. If midwives are to become more skilled, confident and effective in the space of recognising their role to manage and promote mental health during the perinatal period, not mental illness, remember, one study reports how awareness of how much midwives are asked to cram into antenatal booking appointments with physical health screening taking precedence. One midwife stated in the study, once I get through the physical health check and the assessment of her history, anything else is crammed into the last five minutes. So in terms of business as usual and where we are, have we reached a dead end of an intricate pathway within the labyrinth? Are we stuck? Can we actually find a way out? Take a breath because it's been a long journey to get here. 
we might need some refreshments and I know I could do with a cup of tea, but we're nearly there. So we'll take the next slide, thank you. In our corner of the world at Curtin University, under the expert guidance of Associate Professor Dr Zoe Bradfield, Associate Professor Karen Hislop within the School of Nursing, and Professor Helen Scuteris from Monash University in Melbourne, we are focused on engaging midwives as key stakeholders in the co-design of an intervention to standardise conversations and aim to optimise the mental health and emotional well-being of women on their journey to parenthood. We'll do this using a popular health promotion methodology, intervention mapping. The expert lived experience of midwives is integral to all six mm -hmm. stages of the research, alongside engaging the voice of pregnant women, mothers raising children, as well as a range of other perinatal healthcare professionals to ensure the research outcome is locally relevant to Australian women. We are in the initial stages of data collection. So if you're a midwife in Australia who would like to participate in a short five minute survey, Jane's gonna pop a link and a QR code into the chat. Um, we are still recruiting Australian midwives only, um, but if you uh, are eligible, then you absolutely can contribute to that national survey. If you're not in Australia and you would like to follow along with what we think is really exciting, you can find the project on Instagram. Um, the details were on the final slide, but I think we're using my initial slides, but it's called Are We Well on the Way to Parenthood, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Um, the data we are collecting will be added to interview and focus group data to allow a comprehensive understanding of the problem we are facing. If we can begin to define what it means to be emotionally well, alongside hearing from midwives and midwifery leaders, what their experience of the barriers they face within their labyrinth, we can move forward to consider developing a matrix for change before engaging consumer design and stakeholder advisory groups to co-design that intervention with the one aim to optimise mental health and emotional well-being for our women across the perinatal period in Australia, all by late 2026. So we'll take the next slide, thank you. So how are you? Actually quite a loaded question. If I asked you that question now, at the end of the presentation, these stars of light inside the labyrinth could be you, your ideas and enthusiasm to continue to advocate for the change I've offered you today. You could be lights in the labyrinth facing the midwives in your countries where you work and whether the current international scope of midwifery practice means that standard promotion of mental health and emotional well-being has ever made it into the arena is not as important as illuminating a pathway forward towards making tomorrow better for our mothers, first and foremost, birthing and raising the next generations. So we'll take the final slide. Thank you, Catherine. Happy virtual International Day of the Midwife to everyone. Uh, thank you, Catherine and Jane.